What's going on, guys? Nathan Lombardi here with Lambo Media. I'm Christian Bergman, former pitcher for the Seattle Mariners and Colorado Rockies. And welcome back to another episode of the Walk It Off podcast on Walk It Off Wednesday. And make sure you guys subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit, give us a thumbs up on this on this segment if you haven't already. And make sure to follow us on Instagram as well at walkitoff underscore podcast. The link will be in the description. And in this episode, we will later be joined by a very special guest, retired MLB alumni, Pat Light. But before we get into that guest appearance, let's talk about the recent Atlanta Braves signing. The Braves recently signed Yasiel Puig to a one-year deal uh, due to Nick Markakis opting out. And to fill that spot, uh, we've seen that before with the Colorado Rockies, with Ian Desmond opting out and um, them having to sign Matt Kemp. So this isn't the first uh, kind of scenario we've had to see uh, with a player opting out and a team having to go on to sign a new player. Uh, Christian, first and foremost, what are your thoughts on this signing? Uh, well, I, I think it's good. Um, I, they had a bit of a crowded outfield at first. I think they had, right. uh, uh, I think, who was it? Uh, they Acuna, had, uh, Azuna, Acuna, and then Inciarte, and then Marquecas opted out. Yeah. So obviously, like they probably didn't want the decision made for them by, you know, Marquecas opting out. But right. you know, they went out and signed a, a guy who can definitely help them. And right. um, you know, he may be past like his his best days, uh, but you know, he's definitely an energetic uh, personality to have in the in the dugout and in the clubhouse. And uh, but you know, I think he's he'll be a you know a solid uh, another outfield option for them. Right, exactly. I, I, I can see him uh, filling that DH spot more often uh, during this 2020 season due to the NL having uh, the capability of using a DH, uh, not just the AL. We talked about that in the previous episodes. Um, so I could definitely see Puig uh, filling that DH spot for the Atlanta Braves this season more often than not. Uh, but say one of these outfielders does get hurt, do get hurt. Uh, Puig's always going to be an option because he, st- he still has a cannon. He can still perform out in the outfield for the Atlanta Braves if they need him to. Uh, let's just give a quick rundown on the absolute dominant, at least in my personal opinion, I think they will dominate in this 2020 season. Let's give a rundown on their projectable 2020 lineup. Uh, Ronald Lacuna uh, leading off, in my opinion, uh, in the outfield. Ozzy Albies at second base. Marcelo Zuna uh, in the outfield. Ender Inciarte in the outfield as well. Dansby Swanson alongside Ozzy Albies up the middle. Dansby Swanson uh, obviously winning a College World Series in college out at Vanderbilt. Uh, he'll play shortstop. Yasiel Puig, like I just mentioned, uh, will most likely DH in my opinion. Yonder Alonso at first base with a lot of experience. Uh, Johan Camargo at third base and Travis Darno catching uh, be- being uh, behind the dish with a lot of experience. So uh, there's definitely a good mix of veterinary and, and young talent uh, I- I- on this team uh, for this 2020 season. So I think that'll definitely help them, them down the lo- line as a, as a lot of these players um, ha- have postseason experience and some even having a World Series uh, experience as well. Yeah, I think the only real question mark is in their rotation. Right. Uh, you know, they've got Soroka. I said Soroka, Soroka. Um, he's legit. Uh, he'll be starting opening day. But behind him, you know, I think there's, uh, I think Hamels is still a question mark. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. If, yeah, he, he, I think uh, inflammation or something like that. Um, and they've got Felix. Uh, so it'd be, it'll be interesting. I, I love Felix. I hope he, um, I hope he can be like a go-to guy for them. Yeah. Um, so you can kind of revitalize his career. Uh, when I played with him in Seattle, he's an awesome guy. Um, so hopefully uh, he can, you know, come back. And I think if he does, he'll be, you know, he may uh, be a, a good surprise for for the Braves and um, will definitely help them along the way. Because as you just went through that lineup, I mean, it's a great lineup. The, the pitching's the only yeah. question. They got a good bullpen too. Um, they got right. guys who can. Right. Who can? Uh, who they have a lot of guys who have experience closing. I think. Um, right. So, really good bullpen. I think the question is: Are you going to get the the innings out of the starters that you need? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, like you mentioned, that I, I can definitely agree with that. I think their only problem, if they have a problem, is going to be their. 
starting rotation and their bullpen as well. Uh, they have a stacked outfield, Acuna, Ender Enciarte, and Marcelo Zuna. Like I mentioned, Acuna is obviously a young, young prodigy, and Zuna and Enciarte having a lot of experience with uh, the option of putting Puig out there in the outfield as well. So uh, I think they, they definitely have uh, the experience. They have the young talent, like I mentioned earlier. Um, and even up the middle in the middle infield as well, Dansby Swanson and uh, Ozzy Albies. That's, 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 a, that's a dynamic duo up the middle itself. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, and defensively, all those guys are solid. Um, so I don't think, and they've got speed too. You know, they're they're an exciting team. Like I said, the the uh, the pitching for me is the only real question mark. Fulton Nevich, he's legit. Um, you know, they just they have a really talented rotation. You just hope that they can put it all together and, and put together a complete season. And you know, like we've talked about before, uh, you know. You, if you get hot for 20 games, like that could carry you through the playoffs. Yeah. Um, so I think this will actually be, you know, a very interesting season because it's really like up for grabs. Yeah, yeah, and it, like you mentioned, it's going to be a short season and it's up for grabs really for anyone. And in, in, in the previous seasons, from some of these players in the Braves lineup, uh, we've seen some of them uh, get into some slumps. And in this 2020 season, we're really not going to have time for slumps. Uh, they're going to have to be hot right off the bat because there's only 60 games and then you're jumping right into the playoffs. So it'll definitely be interesting. Yep, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. Yeah. And now that we wrapped up the conversations about the new Puig signing, let's transition into the amazing guest appearance of Pat Light. What's up, everybody? Today we are joined by a very special guest, former teammate of mine, Pat Light. Uh, he had a ridiculous high school career, it looks like, at uh, Christian <laughs> Brothers Academy in New Jersey. Claims 20-0 and 0 with a 1.52 ERA. Um, we'll get into that maybe a little later if that's even real. Uh, went on to Monmouth University, later drafted 37th overall uh, in 2012 by the Red Sox. Made his debut in 2016. Um, later traded to the Twins in 2016 for Fernando Abad. Uh, was then DFA'd, traded to the Pirates for cash. DFA'd, claimed by the Mariners, where he and I played together. Um, and then was uh, finally released in 2018. I was there that day, and we were just talking. I've never seen anybody so chipper after being released. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, you know, took it all in stride. And But uh Obviously, got to do a lot of cool stuff. Um, now owns two restaurants, right? Correct. Two restaurants. Uh, and also just started a podcast called um, Sorry We're Closed. And yeah, so that's that's what Pat Light is up to these days. But thanks it's, for coming on. It is, it is absolutely my pleasure. It's It's been too long, man. We had we had some... The loungeman. We had... <laughs> we had <laughs> A lot of good times going from yeah. airport lounge to airport lounge, at least when they were open, because PCL outrageous airport times. Right. So they weren't. They were unfortunately not always open for us, but we made the best of it. Yeah. So for those who don't know, we would uh, make it a point to find out where the airport lounge was. Uh, that was kind of our way of making the PCL Pacific Coast League as show as possible <laughs> uh, even if we had to take a tram three miles from our terminal to get to uh, that lounge it was worth it for that free coffee yeah <laughs> <laughs> free horrible coffee <laughs> yeah um, so I, I remember when we were talking actually in the lounge you were saying that you wanted to get in a restaurant uh, the restaurant business and Lo and behold, you went and did it. So, you know, what? Uh, talk a little bit about like what brought you to do that and and how that went. Well, I mean, I love. I live in Hoboken, New Jersey, which is a big a big bar city. It's a guy. It's definitely more. It's getting you know gaining traction in the restaurant world, and there is a little bit of a difference in those two those two types of places. Um, and you know, I went out you know all the time in my in my early twenties when in the off seasons. You know, I I did enjoy attending the bar scene you know in town <laughs> as you may have guessed um you know and, yeah yeah so uh anyway i um 
met, you know, just end up doing it so often. You meet, you meet owners, become friendly with them, and have it ha- happen to become friends with uh, this one particular group. And um, it was actually two months after that fateful day in Tacoma where I got released um, that I was asked to do my first one. And it was a sushi restaurant, which I've, ne- I've never had, I, at that point, had never had sushi in my life. It's a great investment choice. But, <laughs> but I did. invest in what you know, right? Exactly. That is the, that's the name of the game. So we, so I did it. I you know took a little you know, leap of faith with my my partner, who I you know it turned out well. Um, and then this past year, uh, last summer, uh, I bought into this sports bar, which is uh, a, a great a great place, one of the better places in Hoboken to go and you know have a few beverages, watch some football, stuff like that, or baseball. Um, and uh, you know, and then coronavirus hit. So two for two in the in the investment decisions. So <laughs> we're you know we're living the dream over here in Hoboken. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you also recently uh, just launched a new podcast as well, just like Christian mentioned. Uh, it's called Sorry We're Closed. If you haven't, uh, for the viewers, if you haven't checked that out, make sure you guys go check that out. Um, but what what really inspired you to to, to launch this podcast? Um, well, you know, I I do, I do some stuff with Barstool. Um, you know, the guys like Jared Carabas, who's the Red Sox guy, you know, Eric Hubs, who does the Yankee stuff. Um, and I just, you know, became friendly with those guys, did a lot of stuff at, at the headquarters and, and, you know, in Boston in particular. Um, and I enjoyed doing it. You know, it was something that uh, I hadn't, I had never thought I would do. Uh, but as, as Bergman can attest, I do love to hear myself talk. Um, so... <laughs> So I, you know, I, I, I dove into it and, you know, I, for 19 minutes, I talked to myself the other day as my first episode. So <laughs> yeah, I, I listened to that and I, I did thoroughly enjoy it because it was perfect. Uh, there you go. It so, was, yes. it was very authentic. Very, it, it, yes, it was very me. Um, so yeah, I dove into that a little bit and, uh, it was kind of cool because I don't know how familiar either of you are with the show Cheers. Um, but uh, the um, the guy who's played by Ted Danson on that show is a guy who used to was an ex reliever for the Boston Red Sox who after his playing days owned a bar, um, and that's kind of what I did in my life. And I owned a bar after my playing days. And um, sorry, we're closed is the last line that he says um, in this in the series. So and we and we film shoot everything while obviously we're closed at the bar. So it kind of all comes full circle. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I, I never watched, I never really got into Cheers, but um, hearing that explanation was kind of like, oh, okay, I, I get it. That's cool. <laughs> Makes sense. It was, it was better yeah. than the Pat Light Show, which is the, the original name. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely better than that. Um, so talk a little bit about like your career um, as a whole. Uh, so, you know, I, I only met you, unfortunately. I wish I'd met you a lot sooner than we played together. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, towards the, the tail end, really like the last, I guess it would be what, five I months? Mean, when did you come over to Seattle? I came over to see, uh, it was, I went to the Pirates first. So the Pirates uh, DFA'd me in the beginning of June or middle of June. And That's then right. I came over to the, but me and you didn't really talk at all in the, the first the first part of that, or the back end of that season. We didn't actually really become friends until my last pretty much two months of baseball. Well, I mean, you are you are hard to get used to. <laughs> I was. Do you, do you do you not remember my first three months of Tacoma Rainier baseball? I think I said a max three words until the end of the year, where I threw a bocce ball in the bullpen, which would later send Dean Kikeffer, I don't remember his name, to the hospital with a concussion. <laughs> that's, that's right. I do remember that. <laughs> just just tremendous times in Tacoma. Things got pretty intense. Honestly, it was um, what was Big Fudge's name? I don't even remember his actual name. Um, Max Posey. Posey, yeah. Yeah. So Posey, we were playing down there. It got the starters got wind of this bocce ball game that I used to do in Pawtucket, which is AAA for Boston. And Max wanted to come down and play, and so we were all sitting in a line in the back of the bullpen, and one of the shots where Max had to throw it. Um, you know, over a few people's heads, um, and over to wherever the the hole was, and 
he he had to have the yips or something because he it was supposed to be like a lob shot and he threw it like straight down which is right at Dean's head who was sitting right next to him <laughs> Dean was down for like five minutes and next thing you know he's telling the front office that we were playing bocce ball out there <laughs> and that was the beginning of the end for that light <laughs> <laughs> In, in what season did you guys initially like meet? It was 2000. My, my last year was 18, so 2017. Oh, okay. 2017, the, the, the right right before the All Star break in 2017 is when I came over. Okay. Yeah. So what was the what would you say was the highlight of your career? And I think you know what I'm talking about because you recently tweeted about it. <laughs> uh, oh. And. Yeah, I, I think the the like prompt or whatever you want to call it was describe the highlight of your career in the most boring way possible. So what yes. was that for you? Uh, well, I, it's actually a really bad uh, day for me because I had given up like twelve runs, uh, but I happened to strike out Mike Trout, <laughs> um, and <laughs> I win. How many I'm people good. can say that? <laughs> I was ready to drop the ball, hang up the cleats. I'm good. Um, <laughs> But yeah, he, he I faced him uh, when I, I had a, it's, it's actually a very popular story with my fan base because people love when I make fun of myself. And that particular day, they they called me in, um, you know how it works, you know, Berg. It's, you know, the rookie, you know, once we're down, you know, 43 runs, the rookie's coming in, he's going to eat up the rest of the innings. Um, but they called down and said, hey, we need to get Pat up. And then they called down literally like a five seconds later and said, we need him for the next hitter. And I was, you know, oh, okay, I can't say no. Um, so <laughs> I, I, I go, who's the next hitter to, to Dana, who's the bullpen coach? And he was like, Trout. And I was like, perfect. That's such great news. I yeah. love rushing to get ready for the best hitter in baseball. <laughs> um, and then I was like, well, who's after him? Maybe we're through the bad part after Mike. And he's like, pool holes. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> such good news. Can't wait! I'm super excited. I can't wait to be going to play tomorrow. <laughs> so Trout was the first hitter you faced. First hitter I faced, but I hit him. I threw fastball uh, away, uh, strike one. I was like, "Got this! This is gonna be. I'm gonna crush this guy. Smoke him next pitch." Now the bases are lowered for balls. I go 2-0 to him in classic Pat Light fashion. He hits a double. The base is clear. The whole the whole thing. But later on, I would face Mike again because I did go through the order once in an inning in, in the, the third. same inning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same inning, okay? <laughs> and Mike would come back up, and I struck him out a fastball away. Um, so theoretically, not theoretically, technically, Mike Trout is 0 for 1 with one strikeout against Palai because the hit-by-pitch sure. doesn't count. And a concussion. And Well, it was close to the head. It wasn't actually on the head, though. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so that's the highlight of, of Palai's baseball career. Nice. Did you feel like there was like any added pressure on you uh, since you were facing Mike Trout, or was it just a was it just another AB? You know, when you it, it was more pressure to to be you're facing you know a phenomenal hitter right. and trying to get out of an inning. It, it was July second, so the you know Fenway's already always sold out, but now we're you know we're approaching July fourth in you know baseball. It's a weekend series. So the place is, you know, at max capacity. The place is already losing their mind because we're down 12-1. And, you know, I'm strolling into this game trying to, you know, earn a way onto this team. Um, and, you know, having Trout and Pujols as back-to-back -back hitters to start off, it, there's definitely added pressure. But once you kind of get into it, you don't really notice it as much right. anymore except for what you're trying to do to that particular guy. Yeah. Um, so it was... <laughs> It wasn't added pressure and, uh, after the first pitch was thrown. But before then, yes, extremely added pressure. <laughs> Would you say that was your single most memorable moment in your career? At least your MLB career. Um, no, not definitely not the most memorable. Uh, yeah. My, uh, you know, being, you know, I didn't really have a very lucrative ba uh, baseball playing career. Uh, so I would say, you know, getting the, the call up was the most. Because, you know, it's the dream come true. It's... Right. It's all of that stuff. It's so, it's so involved with your whole life, that particular call, um, that that is that was definitely the most memorable moment. Um, and then a close second would be beating Bergman and Hearts on a consistent daily basis. Um, so that that was definitely a close, and maybe even just 1B instead of 1A, just 1B. Uh, then Trout somewhere in 3, 4, 5 area. Yeah. Uh, 
as you can tell, he thinks he is the heart's master and he's actually horrible. I, I am the heartsman. And the, it was hearts was the game that you were able to give other people points, right? Yeah. 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 I remember playing in some lobby and me being so frustrated because I, I it's probably my own fault because I run my mouth, but you, every person, even my teammate was trying to get, or no, you don't get teammates in hearts. No teammates, no in, teammates hearts. in hearts. So the entire table was just trying to give me points. They would hold cards to not give other people points when that was the right move for the game, just to give me <laughs> the points. It was so frustrating. <laughs> Yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so wrapping up, what is one thing? Uh, this may be hard to find. Okay. What is one thing that most people don't know about you? And I say it's hard to find because you talk so much. But <laughs> what's one thing that most people don't know about you? I don't know. Again, yeah, I, I tweet constantly. My my life's pretty much an open book. Um. Uh, I mean, the thing that, that's popped up the most as, as a kind of a personality trait, um, which you got to experience a little bit, but you probably don't remember because it, it wasn't me, is that I'm actually fair, fairly shy and reserved until we actually, you know, we get into like an actual friendship or, you know, whatever, some type of relationship where I know the person more. Um, and I think most people don't. I know, I know Eric Cubs over at Barcelona who grew up in my area thought I was just a, a, a huge you know, jerk growing up um, because I, I it just I, I was so, so quiet. It felt like I, I didn't want to talk to anyone. I was better than everyone. Uh, when in reality, it really is. I just don't. If I don't know you, I, I won't really talk to you. Um, and I think based off my Twitter, my Twitter antics, my Instagram antics, and um, now if people are watching this podcast, these this antics, I doubt people think that's something that is in me uh, to be quiet at any point in my life. So yeah, I guess that's, yeah, that's probably I mean, the best answer. Honestly, I don't remember that you didn't say a word for two months when you first got to literally. Coma, I sat, but that makes I sense. sat in the corner. Who was the? It was Kelly Ryan Kelly. Yeah. Yeah, I, I sat in the corner. I thought that guy wanted to murder me. He was a kind of a nut job, um, and I literally just sat in the corner and talked, spoke to no one. Like I, I put my headphones in when I get there. I just did my own thing, and then like that would be the end of my. I'd go out to the bullpen. You know, I was always odd man out of throwing, so no one wanted to throw with me. <laughs> and it was, it was just, it was like, it was like you know when you're in kindergarten trying to find a throwing partner and no one wants to throw with you. Uh, it was, it did not speak. Minimum a month. Minimum. I won't say two for sure, but minimum a month. Didn't speak to anyone. Uh, that's it. I it's definitely not, would not have guessed that. Yes. You. I mean, Lamb was the first time meeting me. There's yeah. no way you think that this guy no. Is, no way. does not speak. <laughs> it is what I is what I do. But when I do come out of my shell, it's it's aggressive, very yeah. aggressive. Yeah, for sure. Indeed. Well, Lambo, you got anything else? No, it wraps up everything. This gem I of a human being. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wraps up everything. Isn't it surprising how I think I always think back to me and you and how we became close in in Tacoma and how surprising of a friendship that is in is. regards to how reserved you are at almost at all times and how outgoing I was on that team. I think I think people were upset that I got released solely for the personality, you know, you know, oh, not for because sure. I, was, I wasn't helping the squad in any capacity on the oh, field. Who cares? <laughs> exactly. That was the most delightful. I was like, people are actually upset that I'm leaving right now, and it has nothing to do with baseball. <laughs> right. Well, that's how it goes. It, when you have a, a unique personality, someone that you know keeps things light on the team, that's important. Uh, especially my, for my any team. Yeah, absolutely. Seriously. But yeah, hey, man, I really appreciate you coming on and chatting with us. Of course. Enjoyable as I expected. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Best of luck with the restaurants and. Uh, and the podcast, I'll be checking that out. Please regularly. do. <laughs> Please do. And if you guys, either of you are ever in the great state of New Jersey, um, or Manhattan's probably the reason you're actually here, not because of New Jersey. <laughs> but if you ever happen to be in the area, please let me know. I'd be glad to show you around. Yeah, man, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Pat. Anytime, guys. All right, thanks. And now that we wrapped up the amazing guest appearance of uh, the definitely entertaining Pat Light, 
Uh, let's transition into the fan question from a buddy from my high school uh, here in Broomfield, Colorado. He asks how no fans will affect the 2020 season and the MLB teams and players in particular. Uh, Christian, what are your thoughts? Uh, it's it's going to be a little weird at first, I would guess. I, I remember there was a game I played uh, a few years ago. Uh, the fire alarm got pulled and they had to evacuate the stadium. There was no fire, but they had to get everybody out of the stadium just as kind of a formality. But we had, it was like late at night, we had to continue the game. <clears throat> and so we started the game back up and there were no fans in the stands. Yeah. And so it, it's weird. It, it kind of brings you back to like almost, you know, little league or high school days. Right. You know, where you're playing these games and you just hear like the sounds of the game. So uh-huh. you know, I think as, as a player, it'll, you know, take a little getting used to. And especially in those stadiums, like everything echoes a ton. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it, uh, I'm, I'm curious to see if they'll have music and, you know, sound effects and stuff right. going in the stadium. Because uh, if not, it, it, it'll be a little weird. But, um, you know, I think in the end, like, you know, guys will adjust to it pretty quickly. And, um, and it won't really, you know, affect uh, the product on the field. Uh, what I think will be interesting as well is uh, I'm guessing that TV networks and stuff like that and um, the people producing the game on TV, there's going to be more interaction with the players. I think you're going to see more, like, uh, mics on, on guys oh, during yeah. games because yeah. they were doing that in, like, the All-Star game and stuff. Spring training. Um, yeah. And in spring training, so I think they're going to do that a lot more to try and get people to make sure they watch uh, the game on TV since they can't go to the game anymore. Um, but you know, I, I think as far as you know, as a from a player perspective, um, I, I think it'll be just fine. Yeah, for sure. I think something that'll be definitely interesting is uh, the momentum grabbers. Like, just just for example, like the World Series, someone just hits a go-ahead single or. a Go ahead, home run. Just, just uh, put, putting those out for example. Uh, that'll definitely be interesting. Not hearing any any fans in the crowd, the crowd roar. Um, and they've tested the fa- uh, the fake fan noise uh, during training. It's, it's been interesting already. Um, and even the NBA is talking about using NBA 2K, uh, the video game of fan noise in in the stadium as a possibility. I don't know how realistic that's going to be. So it'll definitely be an interesting interesting season. And like you said, uh, the mic'd up, I think that will definitely provide an interesting aspect uh, for the fans and the viewers and even the players as well. Just uh, see what each other's going, uh, see what's going on in each other's mind throughout the game. And then even for the viewers as well. Yeah, I actually didn't think about like, you know, like you said, in a big, big moment when, yeah. you know, something happens and, you know, obviously like if it's the home team, you know, there's a big crowd reaction. Yeah, yeah. right. You're not going to have that unless they put it in. Yeah. And, you know, who gets to decide when and to what level they put the yeah. noise in. That's kind of a, I don't They're know, it seems have... almost a little too artificial <laughs> to me. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, and, and I could see, like, people, have, you know, sort of abusing that, too, trying yeah. to get, I don't know, there are, be a home field advantage to that if you could decide when there was crowd noise and could you use that to distract or uh yeah you know like because in let's say a bases loaded situation late in the ball game it's gonna be loud are they allowed to turn the volume up yeah (laughs) and you know presumably put more pressure on the visiting team on that guy's pitcher that seems kind of you know unfair (laughs) Yeah. And one thing I just vice versa. Yeah. Yeah, one thing I just thought about. It's gonna it might bring controversial controversial um controversial opinions uh from, from the fans and even the players and owners themselves. Because like if they don't agree with the fan noise, if if that's if that's the route they take, then that might lead to controversial uh happenings uh for the MLB and it might not might not lead to a good um what's uh, what's the right word? A good I would it just opens up too many possibilities to yeah right you know screwing around with stuff if it were up to me i'd leave it out just play the game as it is like 
you know, have a little 60 game or, you know, however many games it ends up being yeah. uh, total, just, you know, play it like it's, you know, right. you're back in the sandlot or something. Just right. leave it the way it is. Right. Uh, I think that's the best way to go about it. Yeah, most definitely. Well, I can definitely agree with that. Um, I don't think they should uh, take it too far and too artificial, but that wraps up everything I have for this week three, episode three uh, podcast. Um, do you, Christian, do you have anything else to add? No, I really enjoyed talking to uh, my old teammate, Pat Light. He's definitely yep. a, a character and yeah. uh, looking forward. So whoever we have next week has a tough act to follow. But um, make sure to uh, comment below any questions you guys have. Um, follow us on social media. Uh, let us know anything else you guys want to see, and, and we'll make sure to get back to you. Yeah, most definitely. Make sure you guys follow us on Instagram, like uh, like Christian mentioned, at walkitoff underscore podcast. Like I said, uh, the, the link will be in the d- description. And we announce uh, that week's podcast guest the Monday before the podcast drops. Uh, so that's where you can find uh, who the podcast guest for that week is going to be. Uh, so that's kind of behind the scenes first first-hand access so make sure you guys tune in for the upcoming weeks and thank you guys for tuning into this episode